We saved a $500 Porsche Boxster from the junkyard and are turning into our vision of a 1960s styled supercar. Last week we got it driving and had a ton of fun with it. This week's challenge is to finish the body design so that we can begin fabricating it. All of that and more in this week's episode of Project Jigsaw. Jigsaw is finally running and driving, however it is time to get serious with the body. I think the first thing we need to do, and certainly not the only thing, is put a pair of headlights on this. There's a huge amount of personality of a car that comes out through the headlights, just like through the eyes. I want to pop them on there, and that's going to really start to point this car in the direction that it's actually going to go. Tony's making his favorite soup. Stone soup. About 1% of the audience will understand that yep. reference, I think. Maybe not even. <laughs> Tony got me these dimensions for a 993 headlight. I don't think they're right, because that is not a 993 headlight shape. <laughs> so what happened, Tony? Uh, so instead of 26 by 12 centimeters, it's 26 by 22. What happened was, when I'm using a tape measure, five hours later, I went to the second one and it just wasn't reaching right. The tape had to bend too much. Many hours later, and so the story is way too long. You asked. Much better. Currently printing Tony a giant Yoda out of marble pet G. Closer to life size Yoda, which I would hesitate to call giant. <laughs> we are making a framework so that we can add a roof to this so that we can get that aspect of what this car is gonna look like. So it's cohesive with the rest of the build. Yeah. I do think we should keep it wooden like that though. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Balsa wood, they put it like in the 914.6 GT, you know, yeah, yeah, how, how well that work out? Not good. They were lighter weight, but they actually reduced the top speed because they flex so much, they ruined the aerodynamics. <laughs> too flat no I, I think that's good for we'll put some NACA ducks in there <laughs> NACA duck the world then we, then we won't need any windows on the side we'll just put NACA ducks on the top to blow right down stop yeah. it so if you don't remember from the last video we did on the clay this side of the car which is the uh, passenger side is the more refined side the uh, driver's side however we just have very 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 rough tin because we're mainly aiming to get that side to be the final product because we don't necessarily need to do both sides exact. Just nice to have both sides kind of roughed in so that when you look at it, it, your brain can connect the dots easily. This video has been paid for and sponsored by EcoFlow. More than 50% of power outages in the United States happen due to severe weather. As many of you are aware, we are big fans of EcoFlow on this channel. We actually genuinely like their products. Most of the lighting you see in this room right now is being run off of the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. The EcoFlow Delta 2 Max has a two kilowatt battery, but EcoFlow also sent us the expandable battery that adds an additional two kilowatts. Our shop runs on electricity like many shops do. If we were to lose power right now, what would we do? However, with EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, I'm able to continue working. I can plug in an angle grinder. I can continue my 3D prints if I need to run them overnight. I can plug in lights so I can see when I'm wrenching. It's currently winter. We're actually getting snow this year. I'm sure where you're at, you might be experiencing severe weather as well. Having 4,000 kilowatts or even 2,000 is extremely helpful. You can plug in your refrigerator to keep your food fresh. You could plug in your microwave so you can make your food. You could charge your phone. You could even run a heater to keep yourself warm. Click the link below and use my code EFJDCCRU to get an extra 5% off all EcoFlow products. Thank you for sponsoring this video, EcoFlow. Now let's get back to work.
This is a good example of overheated clay. <laughs> Some shelf for our roof. I know, I know you don't watch a lot of TV, but you look like that guy that makes all the chocolate creations. I was gonna say, yeah, I felt like I was frosting a cake or something. Yeah. That, yeah, that works. This isn't the Great British Baking Show, though. I'm not that nice. The forbidden Nutella. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that it'd be faster to make these out of clay, and I don't disagree. However, it was about maybe five minutes of modeling, max, because Tony had the wrong, you know, measurements. All in all, we probably had maybe six or seven minutes into making these. But time aside, these are 100% precise now to being exactly one sixth scale. We're not eyeballing it and hoping for the best and using measuring and then if it's made out of clay, bumping it a little bit and changing shape. We can use these now as reference on the model to figure out if we're gonna use these lights and also where we're gonna put them. I see you got these printed, Ryan. Oh, they are done. Problem is, they're just a little too big. <laughs> I don't know, it's kinda cute. <laughs> is that the joke you're waiting to tell me this entire time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy stopped me mid-sentence earlier to tell me a joke, stopped, and this was like an ad probably an hour and a half ago, just for that. Yes. Yes, it was worth it. Put your gloves on, you heathen. <laughs> like you're I feel like chips. I'm making. I feel like I'm making like a whoopie pie. I imagine them being a little larger in scale to the rest of the car. So that's why we do these things. <laughs> that was your hand. I'm like, what's that squeak? <laughs> Wait, I don't hate them. No. What no. if we go like a little wider with them? It's a little wonky, but it's also not symmetrical in the car. Like the car isn't symmetrical entirely, so. Right, no, yeah, this is actually, better. it's starting to uh, highlight the lack of symmetry. <laughs> we were talking about what we want to do on this front end. When I cut this back, I cut it all the way back to where our framework is so that I could get it back as far as, as I could. Um, that left this very straight. So we want, we want more curve this way and more curve this way. So we're gonna do that. Yep. For those who are not aware, Underneath all this clay is a plastic model of the chassis sitting down in the shop right now, so we know how far back we can carve and still fit this body around that chassis. Yeah. Many of you already know that, but for new viewers... That's what the as, blue is. That's what the blue is. It's 3D printed. It's one-sixth scale. And then the other thing we talked about is that it's just very flat in this area here. We want to get more of a wing, I want to call it. So we don't want to carve this down any further. It's just going to make this windshield look even taller and we really don't have much room to go. So the only way to accomplish that is to build up in this area. And that's going to just give us a little more of that shape. So now our, our feature line across the front is more of a smile. It comes up instead of being straight across. And I think that's the, the direction. Yeah, that looks way better. I, I, ignore that half over there. <laughs> that looks way better. It's much more aggressive. Or don't ignore it so you can see where, where we came from. <laughs> yeah, kinda, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I think, I think that's going in the right direction for sure. Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to keep moving in the right direction. Funny if you look at it like side to side because of the symmetry issue, but yeah. like that is killer. Yeah, I had a 
quarter inch clay here and take you know an eighth inch off there and all of a sudden yeah it's oh it's ferrari oh it's the lotus oh it's a corvette oh it's a porsche yeah, yeah. Not, not to mention cars have been made for like 100 years now, so there's like nothing new you can do anymore. And if it is entirely new, no one's going to like it, including because it's, it's not going to be part of design principles that actually make sense right now. Well, that's it. I mean, it, it has to function also. So yeah. it has to go through the air and it has uh -huh. to go along the road. You can't change physics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go to space? <laughs> space cars? You're just working through different aspects of physics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's not yeah. changing them. <laughs> yeah. You're still not changing physics. You're just working through different uh, aspects of physics. <laughs> So I really like the direction this is going, the shape. This is kind of what I had. It's much closer to what I had in my head. I'm not a sculptor by trade. So getting from my head to here, it takes a little bit more. Um, but the one thing that uh, we're seeing is that we're really proud of these wheels. And these wheels are currently sitting. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. I'm talking to the wheels. <laughs> They're currently on one inch spacers as it is. I don't really want to bring the wheels out any farther. So I think we're going to have to take this shape and scale it down. The other thing that's going to help is that my first impression of these headlights when we stuck them on there is they felt a little small for the overall size of the front end. And so as we scale that down, that's going to bring all of that into a better proportion too. While Tony's continuing the front end, I'm going to jump back to the rear end of the car, which is what I had been working on previously in the last video. Um, the rear end that I started is very inspired by the Alpha 33 Stradale. Stradale, Stradale, Stradoodle, which I think is a little evident in this. It also looks a little bit like a charger in the back right now, which I don't like. Um, you keep, keep doing your clay up there. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is kind of refine this rear end and get to a shape I like a lot more than it currently is. Alright, so Tony, how did I deal with the clip? I'll, I'll come back later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy with the direction that we're uh, going here. This is this is what I was imagining or closer to it. I was concerned because this felt like this was swimming in a very large area, this headlight. Uh, it's, it's feeling better now. We have a natural line here that I think can extend a little farther down and widen this area, which is going to make that smaller and mm -hmm. make this feel more at home in the space that it lives in. I agree. Now, we noticed that the whole body was really large in proportion to this. These are to scale. So we don't want to move those wheels out any farther than we already have. So we carved a whole bunch of this back. Uh, that went well, but now we lost a little bit of our hourglass shape. And I can see that we need to carve some out of these doors. Um, the one thing we don't really have is any reference for where the original doors kind of were on this car. Yeah, um, if, you, if you dig in deep enough in here, you'll find a rocker. <laughs> rocker, yep. Which is the, about all the reference we have. Yeah, and the top okay. of the apron here. We have that top of the apron yep. and yep. the ed edge of the core, or the uh, roll bar there. Right. So if I it. hit blue, I know to stop. 
Um, yeah. But I think I think that's what we need to do is, is carve some of this out, get some of that hourglass shape back, and that is going to really help this whole front end come together. So what I'm working on the back here is I got this to slope down a little bit more. I might go a little further with that, I'm not sure on that, but right now what I'm really focused on is the center right here. Cause this whole area has not been developed at all. Um, you'll see right here, I have like a little line carved in cause I'm thinking what would be kind of cool is that this center piece, I like it being a little bit more recessed and running down. And then I'll have like a little, I'm thinking like we have like a little spoiler on top, you know, to like, Give it a little bit more dimension and kind of tiptoe that line between 60s and slightly modernized. And then we have this giant block back here that still needs to give some more dimension. Um, I think I might scallop this in along with that little recess and like kind of push it back. Uh, I'm still playing around with it. I'm very excited though with the progress we have so far. Tony, you got a pretty big mess there. A little bit of sanding, a little bit of buffing. It was right there. <laughs> Even if it were frosting on a cake, I'd be kind of disappointed. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very dry <laughs> frosting. All right, Tony, I got something to show you. Okay. Big, 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 big reveal. Ha! Huh? 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 Oh, yeah, there you go. Got the exhaust tips. The exhaust blobs. Because the exhaust like, blobs. I'm making perfect tips right now. Right. But that's yeah. like, I'm thinking, right? So you have yeah. the air flows down through here. This still needs refined. It's just it's just the idea holder right now, right? Got your little spoiler on top, but I decided underneath where it comes down, it still needs to continue downwards because you know the air you kind of like together, you know. You have like a little spoiler kicking up. The air can go like this, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know you have our exhaust tips here because we have our bundle of snakes coming out that's up, up higher. And then I thought so, like right here, this little fascia, whatever you want to call, it, on the back side of the uh, the back panel here, it's concave this way. Kind of like the old Ferraris, um, was it the GTO or whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah, kind of like that is. Yeah, no, I, I think it looks good. I'm just trying to put it together with the whole car. Oh yeah, this isn't a decision yeah. you need to make right now where right. I just showed yeah. you on camera. But no, I mean, it, it does look but... good, yeah. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. I'll keep fleshing it out. <laughs> the roof looks like a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what's going on up here? It looks a little weird. Yeah, well, I carved off some clay in some spots, and now I put some clay back on in some other spots. It was too heavy in here, but then yeah. it, it, it lost a little bit of that, you know, asp, as you said, look, because um, it was a little just too roundy right here, so I brought a little bit back out this way. Yeah, it's a little 935-ish. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the angles aren't right, but I needed a little bit more meat in there. I'm pretty sure I'm mostly satisfied with what's going on in this corner right here between the way this flows flatly into this kicks up to a spoiler here the recession there I'm gonna go through here though I think I'm gonna 3d print some taillights and exhaust tips just so that it looks a little more clean so I can visualize a little bit better Tony what's going on up here um I'm feeling pretty good about the shape I think I want to just shave it back a little bit to give us a little room for a little lip Oh yeah, that's right. We're gonna have lips to this. I need a lip yeah. to the back too. 
So that's what I'm working on. Cool. It's definitely better. Um, this area is awkward. There's, you know, coming across the hood, this kind of comes up out of nowhere. And then it, like you said, Ryan, it translates weird from low and in the front. It just gets, this gets very tall. It's like the, yeah, it's like the Rockies coming up out of the, <laughs> out of the central plains. And so I think, yeah, maybe we can not complete. I, I don't want to lose this that we have in the profile. Um, but I think we can carve some of this area right here out and get this so so it's a little bit less that way um, without losing that sense that maybe we end up adding a little bit back in here and getting a little bit more this way. The, the peak is kind of back, which on some of these cars, that's exactly what it does. I'm not sure that it's right on this car. I'll figure it out. Yeah. This is, this is extremely hard. I think that's one thing we need to get across here that I think is... A little hard to show on camera. Yeah, uh, is how hard this is. This is really tough because, like we've 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 mentioned this many times in the video, you shave a little bit off and everything changes, and then you have to adjust everything around it, or it looks bad, or it looks like a different car, and to come up with something that is inspired by other cars but doesn't like look flat out like another car, especially, is really hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason that car manufacturers take months to do this process <laughs> yeah and uh what you're seeing right now is in the span of a couple of days so yeah <laughs> yep. yep uh and by untrained guys who are not sculptors <laughs> right yes this is not this is not what we were trained to do So it's feeling a little long in the front end, which it has, and a GT40 or a Miura are both, they're both long in the front end. Just knowing mechanically, mid-engine, we don't have a lot up there that we need all this space for. And aesthetically, when we get the headlights close to where we feel like they should be down here in the nose, it's just a very long way from the windshield and you know and then in the profile yeah it just it just feels long it doesn't feel out of place in relation to those cars but i'd like it to be shorter and i really didn't think we could i remember at one point carving this clay back till i was right up against this blue block and then i was just under here looking again and realized i'm nowhere near that and that blue block is the front tub on the chassis because yep. if you guys remember, we modeled this blue block of plastic. It was to be one sixth scale of the chassis we have. Yep. That was like our cutoff line of like trying not to cut right. the chassis. Yeah. I'm not sure how we got here, but at some point more clay made its way on the front of this. And I was assuming something. We know what happens then. Start carving back. Love it. Yeah. Hey, actually, I mean, yeah, this is a design I, I process. Do. Yeah, this, this, this is part if, of it. If we weren't doing this, we'd be compromising. Yeah, and be brushing it, and it wouldn't be a good end product. Right. Yep. And we don't. That's what we. That's not what we do in this channel. No. No. I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, 
carved the back stuff. It's driving me insane that this toupee is. Yeah, yeah. Just it's breaking up the lines of everything. <laughs> Liking that it now has some actual character. It doesn't feel like a pine wood derby block. Um, really like, I, I mean, of course I was the one carving it, but I really like the shape that's coming in here. It's starting to feel like what we were after. Ryan's doing a great job in the back. He thanks. To, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yep. So it, there's a lot of different things going on there and they work well together and they complement the front. It definitely, you can tell that we were working on this together and not each given a separate half of the car and then and then sticking them together. So that's all working really well. The area, the biggest area that we still need to work on is the area that we haven't really touched, which is from here to here. Right now it's mostly just a slightly radius, but you know, fairly, fairly straight plane. So we've got that and the roof to work out. So in between where Ryan and I are working, that's where most of the work has to happen. We gotta meet in the middle. Yeah. What's, what's wrong, Ryan? <laughs> Vader's currently staring at me from behind the camera and I cannot, you just stop recording. I know. <laughs> See, I'm also enthused where we're at. I'm more excited about starting the body process. The intentions are for the next video to wrap up the clay and begin fabricating the actual aluminum body for the car and we're going to try a new process that we have not tried yet that i think will work very very nicely for this project so i can't wait to show you guys that process as well license and registration please